So the third stage in the five E's instructional model is the explain stage. And on the guide that I put together, I have two different notes here, a live synchronous session and video lessons. But these don't necessarily have to be teacher-led experiences. In the explain stage, we want to give students the opportunity to develop an explanation for what did they learn or what did they observe during the prior explore stage. So if we had them doing research, watching videos, reading articles, engaging in a discussion, crowdsourcing information, what did they learn and how can we give them an opportunity to share what they learned? And so a really simple tool that works great for this is Flipgrid. So with Flipgrid, you can have students recording an explanation of what they learned. So everybody has an opportunity to share out and then listen to each other's videos. Another way that teachers can use this explain stage is to host a live synchronous session where there's some direct instruction and there's some conversation. So if you're having to take your classes online, you could give your students a date and time, ideally the date and time they would normally be with you in your physical classroom, and you can host a Google Hangout or a Zoom session. I like Zoom a lot because you can record your sessions and then make them available online in case a student can't come to the live interaction or the live session. And then as you are introducing information and posing questions, you can use the, the chat feature in either Google Hangout or Zoom to get students asking questions and engaging with one another as a group. You can use um, also video recording tools. So in case you're worried about students not being able to come to a Zoom session and you want to do some instruction, some modeling, um, some scaffolding, some of the tools that I really like to use are Screencastify and QuickTime. So Screencastify is a Chrome extension. You can record up to 10 minute videos for free and then you can share those videos directly from Google Drive, which is attractive for teachers who don't wanna post their videos on YouTube. I also tend to use QuickTime and YouTube to create videos. So I'll record on my device using QuickTime and then I will post my videos on YouTube, usually in a playlist of some kind. So students can navigate through videos in a particular playlist on a particular topic. Another option for teachers who want to make the experience of watching a video maybe a little more engaging for students is to design an ed puzzle uh, lesson around a video. So if you sign up for a free ed puzzle account, you can actually look for specific video content. You can choose a particular video, so just grab this one at random, and then you can design a lesson around it where you actually, um, you insert questions, you can insert little video notes, and then as students are watching the video, the video will pause and then the questions will pop up right here and they have to answer them, or it will pause and they'll hear your voice explaining something. So Edpuzzle is nice because you can have the videos available online, you can wrap the video in kind of an engagement with questions, and then on your end as a teacher, you can see exactly who watched the video and what the responses to your questions were. So those are a couple different ways to think about the explain stage, but I would definitely think about, yes, you probably want to do some explanation, some direct instruction, but how do you engage students in that experience, whether it's live using Google Hangout or Zoom, or whether it is kind of asynchronous happening at different times using Edpuzzle. And then also, how are you letting kids share out what they learned in the explore stage using a tool like Flipgrid?